Hello and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 326 at scavengerlife.com. Welcome everyone. Welcome. To week one of our four week European vacation. Scandinavian vacation. It's very yeah. sc- it's very Scandinavian. Yeah. So we left a week ago. Uh, we have been to Iceland. We had spent three nights there and now we are finishing up uh, five nights in Copenhagen. It's very... Very European. It's very awesome, yeah. <laughs> and like a lot of times, the yes. first weeks of our trips are always kind of decompressing. Oh my God. A lot of taking naps and, uh, you know, <laughs> not, getting... Not on purpose. Yeah, you know, just getting uh, used to the time and yeah. just relaxing. Well, and just like not working all the time. It's been nice though. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. You know, we do a lot of walking around. You know, people that have heard our podcast before, when we've been traveling... We travel, we travel like scavengers. Yes. We don't uh, visit or pay for a lot of these museums and all that stuff. So we do go to some. We did go to a museum the other day. But we don't like a, a load up our schedule where it costs, you know, 30 bucks to get into everywhere. Or more. We also don't eat out. Here and there, we'll grab some food, you know, little pastries. But really, we cook all of our own meals. Yeah. And we stay in Airbnbs. Like right now in Copenhagen, we're renting for $140 a night an entire apartment right downtown. It's great. So awesome. Oh my God, what a great apartment. We have all of our food that we buy at the grocery store. I think a lot of times what people do when they go on vacation is go out to eat. So it makes me feel funny not doing that sometimes. But honestly... In some places, it's so expensive. Like, if you eat every meal out, even if you just eat dinner out, it's like, it's just, it gets crazy. So, for us to do, if you're only gone for a week, okay. But we're gone for four weeks, so. Yeah, but I mean, I think, like, that's where vacations, you know, a, a, a lot of people, like, you know, plan vacations a long time ahead and they become very expensive. And when you're, right. you know, spending, especially like in Scandinavia, especially Iceland. I mean, oh, Iceland was insane. We got off the plane and we were just hungry and tired, and we just without a, without a knowing the conversion rate on the credit card, we bought two slices of pizza and two it's salads, and it's fifty dollars. <laughs> I mean, look, number one, it's at the airport. The airport's always expensive. But number two, you're in Iceland. It was like... So... (laughs) You know, I'm like... You know, if you're dropping $40 a meal, uh, that that adds up. For just a regular old pizza meal. We definitely do the scavenger life in all aspects of things. And traveling is one of them. But we do treat ourselves. Like a couple nights ago, I bought tickets to... LCD sound system. Yeah, a band I used to really love. I mean, I still Not do. used to really love. You but a band I really got really into love. in the early 2000s. Yeah. They stopped playing. They just came back. They're on tour again. And it was fun. And it was especially cool here because I guess, I don't know if they aren't as popular here or whatever, but they played in a little tiny theater. Oh, it was, I felt like I was in a living room. people. Yeah. And we got there early and we actually found up on the like when I say the balcony, I mean the balcony is like almost hanging over the stage, and we were right in the in the middle, no one in front of us, and it was like yes, yeah, a scene, someone in a, a great band in our living room. Okay, but you failed to mention we got to sit down right the entire time, like older people. Well, that's how. That's what we like I to think do these days. I don't really. I can't do concerts where I'm standing up or like you go there and the doors open at seven but they don't start till eleven o'clock. Right. <laughs> the great thing was this band they came, they started when they say they were gonna yeah. start. They even announced the number of songs they were gonna play. <laughs> like, it was great. That's it was just, just so great about you know them. he's because you know he's like an old you know the guy who sings He's like fifty, right? No, he's more he's closer to my age, like okay. seven. I mean so he's like He's like mid forties. Yeah, so he's like getting older, it's perfect. He's like this is the deal. Yeah. That's how I like You're it. such a Gen Xer. Yeah, right. It's so funny. I love L C D for life. Yeah, I love L C D sound system. It was they're, good. they're awesome. Um, we have been going to a couple of flea markets. Yes. Really just more for just interest, just because that's what we do. Yeah. We're not really 
on a big buying spree because we're we'll be moving a lot around a lot yeah. the next three weeks. Like look, like when we're in Amsterdam and we're like we're here for four weeks, you can stockpile because you're just like I have a big duffel that I'm bringing home, but that's not what we're right. doing so this time. If we could stockpile and then pack it all one time and get it onto one plane and yeah. then then take it home here. Like tomorrow, we're renting a car. We're driving around for two and a half weeks. We have to fly to Vienna. Yeah, uh, it's a little home. bit more travel, travel. But it's been fun. Uh, we've been going to flea markets where it's really like open yard sales. Yeah, it's like a yard sale. But the thing is, there are definitely dealers there. So there are the people who are like, "I'm just selling my junk," and then there are people who are like, "I'm for a the dealer." Most part, the ones we've been going to, I mean, it's most people, it looked like they were just uh, selling stuff out of their house, clothes. Shoes, oh, yeah, yeah, know. sure. But when you see, like, sure. you're like, ooh, look at this cool, yeah. like, vintage and the guy's like, it's 50 bucks. And the you're cool like, thing, ooh. I mean, I guess it shouldn't shock me, but, you know, we're in Copenhagen and Denmark, and everything here is, like, made in Denmark. And so <laughs> right. you're no looking kidding. at... You're like, oh, this is the stuff I always buy at home, and... And right. it's just everywhere and, you know, here. It's so special when did you find it in America, and it's like very fancy. And here, you, you know, people would just bring their own housewares, and it's like this. Made it's in like Denmark. this beautiful tea. I wish I could like, have bought more stuff. Oh my god, yeah. I would buy like almost everything. But you're just like, I can't travel with all this stuff. Yeah. You know. I, th- I think the other thing I like about traveling uh, is, I guess, this is the we've been doing this since 2011. Every Our, year, yeah. We've been able to come to uh, in Europe, and we stay for two to six weeks. Yeah. Um, it's normally tied in with a job we have, like a, a video job, but because of, you know, our eBay a lifestyle, uh, we just extend it. And I love these times because we just walk around, and we can just have ideas, and we can talk about things. It takes us out of like, kind of our daily grind of our life. Yeah, I feel like it, it, it's funny because we're scavengers. Sometimes I question, like, what is the point? This is a weird thought. What is the point of going on vacation? Um, you know, it's like, what is the reason? Like, because we don't spend money. I'm like, we're not going to go to a museum. We're not going to go out to eat. It's like, why the hell are you going to Europe? Just like, to walk around? Like, other than, like, other than you know, <laughs> a shipping eBay every day, we're basically doing a lot of the own thing. You know, yeah. the same things. We're, like, on our computers. We're yeah, like, we're, like, doing stuff with our rentals. Answering things on the forum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like... <laughs> okay, it's not like we didn't go out. We like went out to a couple bars and stuff. But, like, okay, you know. but to answer your its question, it's a fact that we aren't tied to our daily life. Right, you know? we don't have to be. We are taking walks and uh, surrounded by like just different stuff. S- right, you know? right. We're we're seeing different kinds of architecture. We're seeing different yes. kinds of people doing different kinds of things. We're having ideas. And we don't really have to do anything. Right. I mean, that's what the vacation is. I mean, right. we personally aren't like beach people with like right. having, you know. Like a margarita a on the beach. Drink, bring me a coconut drink. Like that's right. not the kind of vacation right. we are. But uh, for instance, I remember a couple of years ago. Yes. We were walking the streets of Amsterdam. Yes. Actually finding stuff in the trash. Some of the things I'm wearing right now yeah. are from finding stuff in the trash. Let me finish. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about what if we bought a second house and turned it into a rental? Right. And we were talking about that. And you know what? We went home and we made it real. And here we are a couple of years later and it's done. Like yeah. We did it, you know? Yeah. A couple of days ago, we were really excited. We went to the... Yes. Uh, it's museum. It's the yeah. Danish Design Museum. Right. It's like they had kind of like they showed you the history of design of like furniture and all yeah. that cool stuff that a lot of people like. That the Danish the modern. Like, I mean, that is like... And they showed like where they got their ideas right. from the Japanese. It's so interesting. From the shakers. Right. So interesting. So we got to have this experience and then we were really excited about this idea. And I was actually taking notes. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to talk about the idea because I don't want to talk about it. But I mean, yeah, yeah. it's cool. We had this idea and it's like a five a year idea. I mean, it's like yeah. a big long term idea. And right. it's something that we are going to put into action or we're going to at least right. try to. Well, you know? so, so 
you know, when I was thinking of like, what is the purpose of these types of trips? And the purpose is, is like, you know, as artists to be inspired, like right. go to Europe and, you know, go to a place like Denmark and be like, yeah, we're obsessed with mid-century mm-hmm. modern, Danish modern. We love it. We're totally inspired by it. Right. So why don't we just go there and like, see it yeah. <laughs> you know see where it came from and you know and it, when I was uh, working a job a regular job and they give you you know 10 days 2 weeks of vacation yeah you know whatever and it's never enough time I mean yeah. I just never had the opportunity to have those kind of right. ideas you know exactly so it's cool the other thing is just it wraps us up on traveling is we've really been a, kind of obsessed with traveling light Yes. So we already travel light. Like we're both of us, super. Both of us only have carry-on bags. We each Backpacks. have a backpack, and then we each have like a second, like personal small bag that has like you know a computer, or, snacks, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, but I think on this trip we realize that even that is too much. Yes. Like our bags that we carry on our back. They aren't like big backpacks. They're like big day packs. Yeah, they're like big book day, bags. Day bags. It's like a book bag. But, we were talking about we could even get half of what we pack now. Like, I want to look like, it's when I'm walking down the street, like I just have like a little small day bag. Like a knapsack. Right. <laughs> and, and people are like, that's crazy. But if you really think about it, because we're staying in an apartment, like we always do, right. we wash clothes. We have a we clothes only washer. Need clothes for two or three days. Yeah, like three you know? days max. Right. And that, you know, things like pants. I mean, pants, I don't know about other people, but I wear a pair of pants m- a multiple for like days. a week. Yeah, yeah, so it's really like underwear, socks, you have, you know, several yeah. pairs of that, a couple of t-shirts. Right. But it's really like the pants is the pants. You have a light jacket. You can like, go. Like, I've traveled around the world many times. Right. And this was the first time I was like, why did I bring five t-shirts right that's crazy right. that makes no Is sense that you have? i have five t-shirts oh God, right what do you think i know i'm yeah. just like what? i mean plus <laughs> the other thing is and i mean i'm sure people know this if you could buy anything mm-hmm. you want almost wherever you are Anywhere. i think you'd have to go to like a jungle in africa before it you couldn't buy couldn't two buy like things, a t-shirt you know? yeah or a shirt or like or... a pair of underwear right yeah so uh yeah. So I think traveling light because it really does it make it nice. You know, you get off the plane and you you're just gone, go. and you jump through all the yeah. You pass by all the people. And the other thing is in Reykjavik and in Copenhagen, there's a lot of tourists, and you see them with the rolling bag. So today we saw someone. Okay, the rolling bags, right? The rolling suitcases, but then we saw this woman who had a hiker's backpack with a regular backpack on front. And a duffel bag in her hand. And I was like, no. Right. And, you know, in the kind of backpack where it looks like she's hiking for, like, two weeks in the mountains. Like, the backpack's, like, almost as big as she is. You know? Yeah. So. It's just like, I... So, my part of the story is I've been obsessed with traveling light because I need to make sure I buy clothes that dry really fast. Because when you, like, wash a pair yeah. of, like... No cotton. No cotton is the worst. You're like... I washed clothes last night. Some of my stuff's not dry. I'm like, no. Because it's hanging. Because, because it's hanging dry. Because mostly in Europe, they're like, we don't have dryers uh, in small apartments. So I've been trolling eBay for travel clothes because travel clothes can get expensive. It's not called trolling. It's called shopping. I'm sorry, shopping. <laughs> And trolling other sellers. No, yes, I'm shopping on eBay. You know, I'm looking for like hiking pants well, that aren't geeky looking. I think that's all about us yeah, no. wanting to be as efficient as possible. Like it's nice, like as scavengers, I want to be as efficient as possible. Yeah. Like I don't want waste in my life. I don't want to bring more than I need. Like yeah. I'm not trying to impress anyone. I don't need like a different outfit on every day. You know, I don't need three pairs of shoes. Oh, yeah. I have my one pair of slip-on vans. Yes. That's it. Yes. If for some reason I need another pair of shoes... I'll go buy them. I'll just... I mean, they have... we there. They do have some uh, at thrift stores here. It's like a Salvation Army. Right. Not like what you think of in America. No, like it's it expensive. Does, it's called Salvation Army, but it's like a little tiny charity shop. Yeah. But they have shoes that are at least cheaper than whatever. You know what? They also have H&M. 
H and M. That's like H and M is affordable. It's like with the Target of Europe or something. No, but it's not Target. Well, I mean, H and M is just a clothing store, right. you know. But but, but again, it's great. Like I didn't have a hat and it was raining, so I I went in and I paid you know ten bucks. It was for ten bucks like for a, a, a cool like. It's actually an awesome hat that you'll probably have forever. Yeah. Um, it's a cool, like, it's just a little ball cap. The other thing, too, that when we're traveling, when you're, like, you know, when you're a super crazy scavenger, you're like, I don't want to buy another pair of shoes. Just go home and sell them yeah. on eBay. Like, if you're like, I have, like, 20 pairs of shoes at home, which is yeah. obviously way too many. Um, but, you know, you just sell it. Like, because I've, I've bought jackets and stuff at, yeah. you know, in Amsterdam, and then I'm like, I'll just sell it on eBay. Like, for double what I bought it for, That's it right. doesn't matter, you know. So anyway, that's my conclusion. Pull stuff out of the trash. Yeah, exactly. And just eat it. Just eat just trash out. <laughs> Dude. Eat trash out of the street. Eat trash. <laughs> we have dumpster dived uh, uh, in the past in Europe for yeah. uh, beautiful breads. Yeah. Not this trip. This is like 10 years ago. Yeah. But still. Okay, so we had a good week on eBay. Obviously, we didn't list. No. Nope. We didn't ship. No. Nope. Uh, we put our... Our store had been on handling, you know, our handling time was... 30 20. business days. It was 30 business days. We were able to change it to 20, 20. business days. Yes. So think about it, that next business days, we're basically telling people we're not going to ship till the first week in October. <laughs> yeah, uh, so people true. buy, it says it clearly, you know, the stated handling time, and then we send everyone a, a message. The cool thing is we've learned... Just to buy a SIM card on the internet. Yeah. We had it shipped to us, so when we landed, we just slapped in a SIM card into our regular iPhones, and suddenly we can uh, uh, use our phones as if we were at we're home. We're just at home. It's great. So we're getting the messages. We're like by we're like, a river. We're like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so right. people are fine with it. A couple of people are like, wait, you're not going to be home. I'm not going to get this for three weeks. We're like, yep. Just like it says, they're like, okay, no big deal. Yes. And one guy, one guy canceled something cause he needed it in a week and yep. that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's but good. most people just say, okay. But I do just want to say we had a crazy great week. I mean, people were buying all week. So we sold uh, yeah. 72 items. I'm just like, I'm like, what? For a little over $2,500. I, I d honestly don't know what to say to and that. So I just got to say, when people are always talking about, they're kind of like trying to hack eBay and trying to like make sure they're into the top, whatever. Right, like, right, right. like if they do this, they're, they know they're going to sell more. I mean, for number one, so we had 30 business day handling time. We, we kept... We sold as much as we did. We also always list good till canceled. So it's, we're not doing the whole fake out eBay by thinking it's a new item. To me, when I have weeks like this, I'm just thinking like it's all kind of random. Like It's some totally weeks, random. Like we think we might have power to, to like – control who buys from us but at the at the end of the day it's kind of like some weeks some people just don't want our crap right and some weeks people do and yep. all we can do is just put up as much stuff as we can and hope we have enough hits out there and people want stuff so and it's just great. that's it you know you just you list it yep and you forget it yeah i mean there was one day this week us. Where we almost we sold like one item. It was yesterday, right? right? We sold like one. But before that, we were selling twelve items a day. Yeah, and so. sometimes like really good things. Yeah, yeah, so it's just like we say, it's random. Right. Okay, customer issues, and then we're going to get into calls. Basically, most of this podcast is going to be a backlog of calls that we have of its questions. But I do want to talk about one customer issue. Oof, so okay. I'm going to do it so it's just very business-like. Okay? <laughs> yes, and then good. Maybe we can talk about it. Very good. Someone bought a rug from us right before it, we left. Hours before They we gave left. us an offer. We accepted. And we were like, if you pay for this right now, we can ship this before it, we leave. And okay. she said, cool. Here's, here's the payment. We shipped it. She got it. She wrote us a message when she got it and said, I don't think this is authentic. You know, we said it's a vintage it's wool rug. Yeah. I mean, it's it's nothing more. And she says it's not authentic. You know, how do I know? I guess she, I didn't really understand the it's question, but she says, how do I know if it's it's authentic? And I just said, well, it's a vintage wool rug. Handmade I mean, rug. I mean. Right. Uh, you know, when I said we bought it from a state sale. And right. Kind of 
gave her a bit of the history, and she says, I want to send this back. And she sent it back saying it's our fault, and she her a reason was it doesn't work. Defective doesn't work. Right. And so we just got it back because she put the... The in, tracking, yeah. And so eBay says it's at our house. So we gave her her money back minus the its shipping cost. Right. Because we're in the e- eBay beta program and we're right. allowed to uh, do that. And then she appealed that, opened right. an, another case and said, I should get all my uh, money back because it's their fault. They gave her all of her uh, money back. And so we just called again. It's, again, the great thing about the internet, we could just call on our com- it's yeah. Peter to eBay. We we uh, waited till they opened up in California. Cal- Utah, Utah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, well, where is it? Utah. Oh, Utah, okay. yeah. And then they said, okay, we're going to appeal this again. Now, so, yes. And so that's where that's we're where at. That's where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, everyone, we get it when people are kind of trying to use the system because just they didn't like something uh, anyway. Right. So, you know, it's buyer's remorse. Uh, she didn't like the rug. And she wanted us to pay for all the shipping. I don't want to do that, so I'm appealing it. Yeah, and, and I'll see what happens. And again, that's what we always say about Amazon. You know, Amazon's kind of, I think, kind of spoiled buyers. Yes. I mean, we're included in that, I guess. Yeah. Where if you can send something back for almost any reason, get all of your as money back. It seems like, and right. but in uh, it's reality when if you're a small person like us. I mean, it's like we'll take it back. No problem. Send it back. Just but if it's because we didn't do anything wrong, yeah. then it, you should have to pay to ship yeah. back and forth. Like so, we'll kind of see how it goes. And honestly, for us, again, we're not talking to the person that bought it. Like there's no back and forth. It's like she's right. talking to eBay. We're talking to eBay, and we're letting eBay kind of be the final decider. If it goes against us, yeah. It's okay. You now, I, I do want to emphasize that, that when she opened the case, you know, she has all these reasons and this whatever, and she's sending us like five messages, and we're not respond- We're not saying anything. Right, because there is no sense in trying to convince, you know. Yeah, I'm not going to convince she's her. She's not going to change her mind. Right. right. So that that's the key, I think, is you're just like all business, you go through the system, you right. know, you're not the like. The only uh, a message I sent her was. If you're unhappy, send it back. Send it back. Yeah. You know. Exactly. She says, is it authentic? I said, yes, it's authentic for these reasons. Right. And then she says, well, I'm not satisfied. And I said, send it back. Send it back. And that's it. Yeah. And that's the the last conversation we had with her. Exactly. So that was it. That was long. (laughs) That was was long. Well, if you talk to any eBayer, they will often want to talk about people who are trying to return things. Because Uh, it definitely is. uh, Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's get to some of these calls that have been building up over the past uh, three weeks. Two right? weeks, three weeks, yeah. yeah. Ever so, s- since it's the eclipse, we, we didn't do one. So you can always call our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. And again, we're not only uh, looking for people that have like a question, especially like a, a new person that has a it's a question. We're also interested to hear from even people that have been on eBay for a long time and they have like a story or something they just want to share. It's with everybody. Hey, Jay and Ryan. This is Rhonda. Um, I am calling because I was curious if you've ever heard or thought about or if this is actually going on where, you know, you advertise that if you subscribe to my store, you're eligible for a 20% off discount. I don't know, that could get tricky to, you know, keep track of of that, but I was just curious if you've ever thought of that. So, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for all you do, you guys. Bye-bye. So, do you mean like if someone follows your store on eBay, they could get 20% off their purchase? How would you know if they're subscribed? Mm. Is there a list? Yeah. I mean, and also I don't really see the benefit. I mean... Like, what does it matter if someone subscribed to your store? That's the question. Yeah. It's like, you want more followers because you think it changes your search ranking? I'm not sure. Yeah. That's like... I think that part of eBay, you know, I think eBay definitely tried to push for a while the whole, like, 
you know, make, a, you know, be like Pinterest. Like and social make, media. And make a list and, like, you know, join my group. Like my collection. And I'm going to write a, a, a letter every week and, you know, and I can, like, give you sales and stuff. Yeah. I, I feel like eBay tried to like build that, that stuff out and I don't think it's worked at all. Like, yeah. I don't think people buy on eBay that way. No, you know? they don't. It's so, not. Uh, yeah. You know, some people we hear really get into the social media aspect and they want to get on Twitter and Facebook and link to things and they get a Instagram account and they link to things and that's cool. It just, for us, it's just like that stuff is too much time. Like we have too many kinds of items and, you know, I don't have time to spend 10 minutes trying to push, you know, a $30 item <laughs> to right. some social media group. You know, right. Just like, it, it, I feel like for us, it would be different if we were doing high-end stuff, maybe, but... Yeah, right. You know, like, if you're selling, like, mid-century furniture and if you have, like, a $2,000 couch... Right. Yeah, that'd probably be a worth spending half a day trying to get down to groups and attract and like people. Pinterest and, and yeah. blah, blah, blah. But for us, the little... It's just... Yeah, we have too many little yeah. items that are just adding up to make us a living. Hey guys, um, I've called in before. This is Ohio's Closet. I had something interesting happen to me on eBay in the past week. I got two cases open, and I thought it was through eBay, but it turns out it was actually cases through PayPal. I looked into it, and I talked with eBay and PayPal to see what was going on, and it turns out that both the items that had open cases were both iPhone 4s, um, the exact same type, everything about it. And the person that purchased the first one had two reviews on their account, and then the second person who purchased the second one had two reviews on their account, one probably being me because I had left feedback right after they purchased. Um, but they opened a case saying that it was an unauthorized payment, that they didn't do it, blah, blah, blah. So I was reviewing it, and I see that they have different email addresses, but who it's shipping to is the same first name, which is a unique name. It's, they put a different last name on both orders, but it's both shipping to Miami, Florida, not the exact same location, but they're very close. So I have a lot to believe that this is the same person who does this a lot and is scamming me. Um, so if I see them again, I'm definitely going to cancel the transaction, but I called eBay to show them that I think that this is the same person, um, it's the same zip code, same first name, and they were smart in doing something. When I was disputing with PayPal on the second case that was opened, it said that the tracking said it was delivered to Miami, Florida, but in their seller address or their buyer address, it said it's Dorsal, Florida. And I said, well, I shipped it to the address that they provided. In further looking, I found through USPS by putting in the zip code that that zip code can be used as Miami, Florida or Dorsal, Florida. So if I was somebody who didn't know to go look on USPS's website to, to verify that zip code, this person would have not only gotten a free item, but me as the seller would have been out of money. So anyway, it's just interesting. I don't know how they catch these people. I don't know if there's anything you can suggest to me if I need to do anything else to see if I can help them figure out what's going on. But it's very obvious to me that this is the same person, and I just have to try to avoid them at all costs, which is hard because they're changing, you know, they're doing new usernames each time. So it just sucks. It was, you know, two iPhone 4s, and I think it was, I don't know, a total of like $120 or something like that. So they got two free phones out of this, and luckily PayPal, with the PayPal protection, they saw my end of the case and gave me my money back, but it still sucks. So anyway, that's all. Let me know if you have any suggestions, and I hope this wasn't confusing because it was to me. So <laughs> you guys have a good one. Okay, Ryan, I want you to answer this, but I will say that's a good example. If you talk to any eBayer, yeah. they'll always have a fun story, and it makes you be like a detective. Like you're right. uh, using the internet to track down what address, and you're looking up names and, and zip codes, and you're and trying to come up with a picture. And anyway, go for it. Well, yeah, I mean that's exactly right. I mean it's the tracking that saves you on both eBay and PayPal when someone's saying. I didn't authorize this. And you're like, but you definitely so, had it delivered to you. Is that what happened here, though? So she thinks the same person bought two phones from her. Yeah. And they're 
disputing that through PayPal, saying that I didn't buy this phone. Right. Okay. They're doing like a yeah. chargeback. I mean, I mean, to me, that's like a slam dunk. As long as you put right. the information right. that the says it got info. shipped to the address that the, the person confirmed you know, address. bought it. It's a, it's a done deal. I mean, you know? I get it when you're saying, like, in some cities, people will say, you know, like, Doral, Florida is basically Miami. And a lot of people use, um, uh, I believe it's Doral, Doral, Florida, uh, as uh, shipping uh, warehouses. Down to uh, down South Down to America. South America. Yeah. Like, one of our friends in Columbia does it. They might have two different ones in the same area, you know, yeah. but that is, you know, if it's the zip code, if it's the, you know, address, you can prove those things. You're like, here's a copy of the label. Here's the tracking, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing is just not to stress about it at all and just know that that saves you every time. You should to, be covered. Yeah. To put your information in there. The, the tracking. tracking and call PayPal. That's what I do. Yeah. I, I put the tracking in. I'm like, here's the tracking, whatever. And then I call them and I'm like, and they close, close it on the I've on had the them phone. close it. Yep. They're like, yep, I see it. I don't I'm think we've ever. It. I mean, number one, people don't open PayPal cases maybe two every it's so a year rare. for us. And we've never not had one go in our favor. Yeah. So. Hey, Jay and Ryan, I just wanted to give you guys a call. And let uh, viewers know a little tactic I use when I get those lowball offers. I know some people are really get bent out of shape about them, but uh, I actually use them to my advantage. Uh, what I typically do is I will wait at least a day or so to respond to them, and I'll send back a strong offer. And what I do is I just drag out the process of going back and forth if they happen to do it. Normally, they don't submit uh, an offer back, but what it does do, I believe, because I've got these emails myself from watching stuff, is it sends emails to potential watchers and says, hey, this item has a current offer available. You know, hurry it up and move quick before you lose this opportunity. And what I've had happen during that, actually, I've had it happen twice in the last two days, is I've had either one, someone will buy it outright for the asking price, or two, I'll get an offer normally from someone that's been watching it. So anyway, I just figured I'd let everyone know about that. I'm normally talking about items that are, you know, $50 and up. So anyway, just wanted to pass that on. Okay, so what you're saying is if you have an item, say it has like 10 watchers on it, and someone sends you an offer, and you're kind of going back and forth on the offer, that eBay sends those watchers an email? I've never seen that. Wow. I mean, as a buyer. Right. I've never seen that as a buyer. Because I watch a ton of stuff, yep. you know, for shopping on eBay. I've never received anything yeah. like that. So I would love to know if anyone's yeah. ever received. I mean, that would be incredible. Right. That's really I mean, smart of them. That would be super smart because then I would be like, oh, no, someone might buy that thing. I should get it right now. If I really want it. Although yeah. I feel like people, they if eBay didn't have people opt in to that, people could see it as spammy because, I mean, I might follow 100 items. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because a lot of times, I mean, oftentimes I use it as a way to bookmark. Yeah. Something. Item. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because I have a watch list. Right. So I could be getting, you know, emails every hour and that would be... An, Annoying. I mean, we get yeah. emails when something's ending, even if it's fixed price. They'll be like, this is ending soon, you know. That's true. But I've never seen huh. anything like, there's someone else you giving offers. If, if that isn't happening, that would be a really good idea. eBay, take that note. Right. If it isn't happening, listen yeah. to this guy because it's really smart. It's, it's like when you go and try and buy a house and it, you have an offer on it and someone's like, oh, we just got another They'll offer. tell you. I'm not going to say what the offer is, but there, you know, there like, is another offer. Yes. So, so put, put your, your best, best and final offer. And it seems like it always happens. It's like, is there really another offer? They can't, they can't say it if there I isn't. Know. It just. That's, that's yeah. my theory anyway. Yeah. I don't think they can say that if there yeah. isn't one. Hey, Jane Ryan. This is Kari calling from the Seattle area. And I am calling about um, an issue that I had and um, was wondering if you guys have ever encountered this before. So um, someone purchased um, a little piece of, like, an art glass vase from me, and um, when I was packing it up, I realized that there was, like, a little flea bite 
in the vase and that I didn't ever see before. And I just was really torn about what to do, whether I should contact the buyer and tell them about the flea bite or whether I should just ship it out to them and see if they say something to me. Um, I guess what was motivating me in, I, I decided to just ship it to them and see if they noticed it. And then, and I didn't pay a lot for it. So if they asked for a refund, I could give them a refund. But what I was thinking today was just that if, um, if you get a ding on your profile, if you cancel an order, so it almost would be better to send it to them and then offer them the refund. Um, but I also, you know, I'm, packing for to go out of town on a trip and I just thought it probably would just be easier to send it to them and see if they notice it. Um, maybe that's not 100% honest, but I didn't see the flea bites before. You couldn't see it in the pictures. And I'm um, just wondering what your thoughts are on that. Um, yeah, it just it seems like the way eBay is set up now versus how it was before when you would get, you know, uh, if you had an item not as described, it hurt you a lot before. But now if you, as the seller, cancel something, that hurts you more. So I just thought I'll just ship it to them and see if they notice it. And if they notice it, I'll offer them a refund. I don't know. Just wondering what your thoughts were on that and if you've ever encountered that, where you notice a flaw in something after the buyer pays for it. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. I have definitely had that happen. A lot of times it's with clothes where you have a sweater and you're like, oh my God, there is definitely a hole in like this part that I did not see like in the ribbing or whatever. And you're like, I have to tell them. I mean, that that's usually what I do is I snap a little photo. Um, I tell them, I offer them a discount. And the thing is, if they say, no, I don't want it, your reasoning is buyer asked to cancel. It's not a ding against your, you know. Yeah, I mean, account. plus it's just, it's more honest. Uh, yeah. You know, it's being honest. I didn't see this. I say more than half the time, people are like, yeah, it's fine. You know, like, yeah. it's, it's not a big it's deal. It's no big deal. Uh, I mean, we even sometimes will be like, yeah, it's bigger than we thought. We'll give you 15, it's percent off, you know, right. so on a $30 shirt, you right. know. Yeah, it's whatever five dollars or something. You know, yeah, because you still want to make the sale. Yeah, you're like I, I want this out. And then if they say you know I don't, it's wanted. Then you know at least then it's all good and it's clean rather than like did you send it? Then they send it back. Did you, yeah, like, I got to pay for shipping. You know that kind of thing. Right. So our our best bet is always like, look, you can send fo- You used to not be able to send photos through eBay messages so that was a pain yeah. so now you're like okay i'll just snap a little picture I'll, i'm telling you like you're saying most of the time people are like no nah, it's fine it's still a good price it's yeah. fine you know yep. so yeah that's the best thing like the airbnb we're staying in right now yes in downtown copenhagen right uh two days before we showed up the girl that owns or she didn't own it she uh a rinses place. Yeah. She was like, yeah, the bathroom sink has a leak, so you have to uh, use the kitchen sink for... You know, you know, brushing your teeth and stuff. And she was like, is that okay? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, fine. Oh, you yeah. don't care. Like, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but it's Yeah, fine. it's not a big deal. Um, but it was cool. I would rather have known that up front... Yeah. And just kind of expected it. Right. Then to show up here, and I'm like, turning the sink on, and it's, it's leaking, like leaking. And then I'm like, complaining to her... Yeah, it's the expectations. Right. It's a setting expectation and managing expectations. Right, exactly. Hey, Scavenger Life. My name's Gus, and I'm a reseller here in Henderson, Nevada. And my question for you guys is pertains to late shipments. I wanted to – lately I've been running across the problem of late shipments due to a move from a warehouse to another storage facility. And so I've had several late shipments due to lost items, I'm ashamed to say. And I know it happens to all of us, but it's been happening to me a little more frequently. I had three this week. And I noticed that my sales dropped off significantly as soon as I um as soon as, as soon as the these these late shipments registered. And I just wondered if anybody out there or if you guys have had that same issue where 
you guys just noticed a drop in sales. Anyway, um, trying to correct my problem, but in the meantime, I just want to see if that's it or if it's just the summer doldrum. Thanks a lot. Love your show. Bye. Okay, so I do want to say this about late shipments. At one point in the springtime, I was having a lot of late shipments because it was hard for me to get my stuff from storage on time because our storage is on the other side of town. Well, also eBay changed how they would do the timing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it was something so... Oh, God, it's so geeky. But, like, okay, so one late item that I have right now, this really gets me. It sold at, like, you know... 11.59 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. Well, that's like 2 a.m. my time. So in my mind, I still have another day to get that, but not according to eBay. They're eBay like, plants a flag and says right. everything's from Pacific, Pacific American, American time, Pacific right? you know, time, uh, West Coast time. So I have that ding because I'm like, I thought I still had an extra day because it was 2 a.m. my time. Nope, I cannot get that erased. So yes, I agree. I have had issues with that, with getting stuff out of storage. But I don't think that those three items affected your selling. I think it's just random. Yeah, see, anytime people say to us, oh, these last three days have been really slow. Right. And they try and track it back to, well, I did this one thing, and I think that's why. To me, I'm like, yeah, three days is not enough time to, to tell if it's just, like, a random blip, you know? Like, yeah. there's too much... It's noise going on. Yeah. And, you know, and going back to how I started this, we had a great past week. I mean, Insane. 70-something items. We made $2,500, which is a good week for us. And we had a 30-day handling time. 30 business days, you know? So, you know, that obviously did not stop right. people from buying from us. Now, if it was a really slow week, you know, I might have been thinking, oh, oh it's the business you know, days, yeah. so obviously I'm like, oh, but it didn't. So right. if we have a slow week, it can't be tied back to anyone. Thing, yeah. you know? Now, you know, if, so this call was from a few weeks ago. If the weeks have gone by and you're like, a month has gone by and you're like, my sales are, you know, totally dropped, you know, that's something else. Maybe... But I don't even know what that would be. Yeah. You know. if, if anything we're uh, saying now about what people are talking about, since a couple of weeks have gone by, if it doesn't make sense, call back and I tell us hear that. how it actually uh, worked out. Right. Because, I mean, that's the thing. Like, none of us know what the algorithm right. is on eBay. I mean, we're all just kind of doing the best we can. Yeah. And so the more information it's we share, the better. Hi, this is Beth from Ohio, and I wanted to uh, call in and give you guys a heads up about something. I know you guys said that uh, you're not on Facebook, but for you and all the listeners, just wanted to make sure you're aware that eBay does have a Facebook page, eBay for Business, where you can get direct written answers from somebody from eBay. Um, I've had to use it only once before, but uh, this week I was having a technical issue uh, the about half of the new items I was listing for the past few days uh, and actually as, as early as a week ago have been ending up in the from eBay international sellers section at the bottom of search results uh, just from a basic keyword search. Uh, I called eBay about it. The customer service rep that I talked to did not see what I was seeing when he tried the same search. Uh, he couldn't see it on his end. And I ended up with a long phone call without really feeling like they were working on it or like I had any resolution. Uh, so I messaged uh, eBay for Business on their Facebook page, and um, I was contacted by someone within uh, by the end of the business day and um, actually wanted to have item numbers and screenshots, and I was able to send that directly to somebody. And I, I, it's not resolved yet. It's only been, you know, yesterday was the, the day I called. It's now Wednesday. But um, at least I feel like it's um, been reported and worked on, which is not the feeling I got when I got off the phone with the, the customer service rep. So I uh, just wanted to make you aware that it's out there. And also um, to maybe spot check your listings just using a basic keyword check for some of your new listings that you're doing and see if you're having that problem also that you can report it because uh, it really is affecting sales of seasonal things. I've got a lot of backpacks that should be 
uh, selling and they're in that international section, they're not even getting viewed because people think I'm in, you know, Indonesia or something. So that was my little bit of advice for today. Thanks, and uh, thanks for the podcast. That is very good advice. I never go on Facebook, so it's good to know that. No, but I think that's I've always thought eBay would just benefit so yes. much if they had a public place where they would answer very common questions like and it was like an official answer that they stood behind and it would just like it would like suck the energy out of all the like conspiracy conversations. And I know that um, you know, Griff is like the guy. He's like the their employee like the or customer and they do that it's radio show and I know he tries to do that where yes. he answers it but it's like in his radio show and there's all those commercials and so it's some, sometimes hard to get to like I don't I listen to all that stuff but yeah. you know it sounds great if they had a Facebook page and they just had right. these answers sounds there, like they do and so people often are asking the same thing over and over nice. again and if they just like put the kibosh on things like yeah. this is how it is boom I will say that when I was doing some shopping for travel clothes, um, I did notice that there were U.S. sellers in the international section down below. Right, but we're in yeah, but, Europe, so... No, but I have it set to like uh, my shipping to my home zip gotcha. code in the U.S. Huh. So, yeah, you're like, why is that right. down? So it Ooh. sounds... Yeah. I've searched it. I haven't seen our stuff there. Um I've done some spot checks after I heard this and I didn't see anything. It is, see, here's my issue though about spot checking my listings is number one, I don't have time to do it. And number two, it's like you're saying the phone rep is like, I don't see that. And you're like, how, you know, what can I do about that? <laughs> Just eBay is so wacky. Like yeah. their stuff is like gotta be messed up sometimes. Yeah. So, but that's very cool about the uh, Facebook page for sure. Hey, Jay and Ryan. This is Carolyn from Pennsylvania. Um, I am definitely a longtime listener and a first-time caller. Um, I've been listening to your show for for a very long time, so um, thank you so much for all of the information that you put out out there. Um, I have a question for you. I don't think anybody has asked this before, but I constantly struggle with this, and I constantly think about it. How much effort do you put into um, – cleaning up the items that you buy uh, before you list them. So I know, Ryan, once I heard you say that um, you threw, like, a Burberry uh, trench coat in the washing machine, and I've heard you guys talk about polishing up shoes and stuff, but how, like, how much effort do you put into it? Um, I bought a sweater the other day and noticed that there were a couple of stains on it, and um, I thought, okay, I'm going to have to actually, like, soak this and – you know, maybe get out the toothbrush and try to take the stain out. Um, and I was really like, oh, do I really want to put this kind of effort in? So I'm just curious about what kind of effort you all put in. I email the other day from eBay. I had, um, I apparently got postage on it. And the email that I got basically said, uh, that's okay. We're not going to do anything about it. But we just wanted to let you know, you know, enough postage on and make sure, you know, you're doing the measurements and everything. Um, so I, I thought that that was really strange. And I'm I'm not sure if that's happened to anybody else. But um, thanks a lot for doing the show. I've learned so much and I feel so inspired um, every time I listen to the podcast. And sometimes I like to go back to the old ones and listen as well, too. Um, take care. Bye. Okay, I just want to say that it sounds like part of your call got chopped off a little bit, so I'll try to see if we can uh, keep the two questions together here. Um, how much cleaning do we do? Very minimal, right. but enough so that our items like shoes, you know, if they need to be polished, if you're like, these will look great polished and that will sell the item, I'm going to do that. Um if a sweater has a stain on the front, I do try to wash it. A Burberry trench, look, I'm selling Burberries for trying to sell them for a lot of money. 800 bucks. $800. If it needs to get washed, I'm going to try to wash right. it. But, you know, we're not buying items we're going to sell for $20 and spending, you know, half an hour on each item. Exactly. And, you know, and look, there are people who say, like, buying clothes from the thrift store is really gross and, like, you, you need to wash everything. And, like, we don't do that. The thrift stores we go to, if you smell it, 
if anything, it smells too perfumey because people have washed it in like, in you like know, Thai perfumes. perfume. Yeah. And so it's fine, you know. And we now, these days, only buy clothes for the most part that have no problem. Yeah, like we look no over it. stains. Although, so I did find like a pretty high-end sweater the other day. And I was like, this is great. And then I was like, oh, there's some marks on the front. So I tried to get the marks off like later and they didn't really come off. But it was high end enough that I was like, I'm going to try. And just uh, show people the... And, and then you just show it yeah. and let them, if they want to get it dry cleaned or whatever. And as far as shoes go, we do... Uh, new, again, these days we basically try and buy shoes that are ready to go. Yeah. We, we mainly just wipe them down. Right. If it's a leather shoe and we can get some good it's money for it, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll polish it yeah. up. And then as far as just like hard goods, most hard goods, we're just like wiping Wipe down. The, the dust. If it's dusty. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. So the other part of your call, which kind of got snipped off a little bit, um, it sounds like eBay messaged you about postage and measurements. So does that mean that you got the message we were asking about of like you were off by two ounces? Is that what they were saying? I don't know. I did not get an email about anything about measurements and postage right. that I can remember. But maybe someone else listening did. So I would love to hear about it on a call or on the forum. Hey, Jay and Ryan, it's Nan calling from Tuckasegee, North Carolina, just down the road from you guys. Um, I'm an avid listener of your podcast and am relatively a new seller, I guess, on eBay for about a year now. And I'm trying to branch out and be as versatile as I can to attract new buyers by shipping overseas, et cetera. And one of the areas that I have not really been involved in is allowing for local pickups. Um, and freight shipping because it just seems daunting. But, of course, you guys uh, provide so much good information. You've inspired me. And I have a large item that I have listed for local pickups. And I had someone contact me through eBay asking, would I consider shipping it? Um, and I responded to them that I would be happy to coordinate their, um, with their shipping company of their choice, but that they would have to, you know, make those arrangements. So as I'm doing some research to prepare myself, it looks like that in accepting payment is uh, where my question uh, lies. It appears that if they were to pay me through local, um, uh, through um, PayPal for local pickup, that I am not protected under PayPal's seller protection. It indicates explicitly that they do not cover local pickups. So I'm concerned about how I get paid. Um, and because eBay's policy specifies that I can't request cash or money order or any of those terms, that I have to offer an electronic way to pay unless it's an automobile sale, which it's not. So I'm, I'm curious about how you guys do it. I saw in the blog um, that Jay indicated that you guys do it a lot. I've heard you say that you sell furniture and different things where people pick up. So I'm interested in how you get paid. Do you allow uh, the buyer to pay you through PayPal? And are you protected because you've allowed U-Ship or another company similar to that to, um, to make those arrangements? And so, in essence, you have tracking or proof of delivery that way. Curious if you could elaborate on that, if my question isn't too much of a newbie one. Sorry if it's been answered elsewhere, but I did search on the blog, and I didn't see uh, anything specifically indicating how you get paid. So thanks for your help, and thanks so much for um, your podcast. It really helps me a lot. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, a local pickup, in our mind, is like selling something on Craigslist. Right. You know, so if you're willing to sell something on Craigslist and have someone come and pick it up at your house, it's the same thing. We also agree that the best thing to do is, like, if someone wants to have a shipper come pick it up, and you say, if you get the a shipper, we'll talk to them, but you're in charge of figuring all that stuff out. Right. And if it's a nice item, people are accustomed to doing that. They have a yeah, shipper or yeah. stuff like that. And then as far as payment, I don't know what to tell people. It's just a choice. We have always had people PayPal us. Right. We always say, pay us first before yeah. we start getting into like waiting for you and setting up time. Pay us first, and then you pick it up when you want to. I don't know. People say, like, they can scam dispute you it and, and just scam you. I mean, 
it's never happened to us, so I don't know what to tell you. We're not worried about it. I guess my I guess I would love to hear from other people, but my thought is that you would somehow upload screenshots of your messages like we coordinated pickup. Yeah. Like this happened. Right. And I mean because everything's done through eBay messages. His messages like yeah. I'm coming on Tuesday right. at three o'clock. Mm-hmm. And, and then what someone told me was is that what they do is they print out the invoice of the item. And when the person comes and picks it up, they have them sign for right. it. Right. I mean, some people say, I even take their picture in their car. With the, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's like, all right. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, can like, do all those things. People should do whatever they sh- feel comfortable yeah. with. Yeah. But ultimately, I guess if someone's going to try and scam you, it's always going to get complicated. But for the most part, 99.9999% of people are just people that want an item and they're just, they just want, like, yeah. doing it. You know? Now, my question is, she said she can't request cash or money order for local pickup items. Is that true? Because I feel like eBay still takes their cut even if you're like, Mark is paid. You know, Mark is paid mm-hmm. and shipped. They're like, we're still taking our final value fee. You know what I mean? No, I think people can pay with cash. I think so too, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was my I mean, understanding. I say they've changed that. Yeah, because uh, eBay's still uh, taking their, their yeah. cut. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's anyway, like... But, uh, you know, it's just like, it's with anything. Like, I, I guess people, or not people, we all want like 100% guarantee, <laughs> tell me it's going to be okay, everything's safe. And I guess like, you can't do yeah. that. I mean, if again, if someone wants to scam you, <laughs> they're gonna, and you have that really rare person, it's yeah. going to get complicated. But the good thing is, if you're organized and you're communicating through eBay, and if you know all the its rules, for the most part, yeah, it's going to be it's okay. Be okay. It's We've be only had point. good experiences with yeah. local pickup. Hi, Jay and I. This is Dennis, and I've been selling on eBay for two and a half years now, and I just decided to quit my job this spring and go full on full time eBay selling. And then I found your podcast in May and I've been listening to it all on road trips and stuff and it's been an amazing podcast. I love to hear your teamwork. It's just awesome. So I've got several questions for you. First question eBay just raised my selling limits to two point one B and I was wondering if you have some sort of astronomical selling them at like 50 trillion or something. Second question, I currently have about 35,000 in inventory worked up and I've been considering some type of insurance and I was wondering if you could make any recommendations, uh, business insurance or uh, special home insurance or some way of protecting uh, investment case of fire or flood or you know theft or anything like that so if you had any uh recommendations please let me know and then third question uh i was wondering about the caller who called in about selling her ebay account i was wondering if you ever heard back from her and uh, if you have did you find out whether she sold her ebay account and if so how much I was wondering if you'd ever considered doing that with your second experimental store. And if you ever did consider, would you consider uh, trying to put it on eBay for uh, buy it now or some sort of auction and see if you get like 20000 30000 for it or something. But I just wonder if some sort of drop shipper might be interested in paying a nice price for it. And uh, lastly, I just wanted to say I was also – recently trying out the new promoted campaigns listing through eBay, and I found out that on my 30-day listings, when the listing would end, they'd no longer be linked to the campaign, so I've been switching all mine to good to cancel. So I was wondering if you ever had that same thing happen to you. And then, I guess, uh, thanks for the great podcast. Look forward to hearing answers. Uh, number one, I do not know my selling limits because I think it's just, I don't know, it's just right. I mean, so high. I think pretty quickly, it's once eBay sees that it, you can sell things and keep people happy. You yeah. Know, it takes like a month or two to like sell a couple of things. They start to raise your a limit so quickly that it's almost un, 
Alluding. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know our thing, but I never think, oh, yeah. we better be careful about putting that stuff. Although I will say on our second store, at one point recently within the last year, we hit the limit and they just automatically were like, we've upped your limit. I was like, I didn't even yeah. notice, you know. Oftentimes just calling them and they'll be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, they're no just, they see yeah. your history. And it's they just want to see, again, I mean, what their, their assistance is all about, like they don't want someone jumping on. Putting up a bunch of it's Gucci handbags. Yeah, they sell a bunch of them. They're all fake, and and you know, you, and then so you don't exist. They are just trying yeah. to slow people down. From right, that. exactly. Okay, next one. The second question was about insurance of right. your. So when stuff. we talk to our insurance agent, uh, the way we understand it is they will only insure what it, you've actually spent on the inventory, right. not what it's worth. Right. So. For us, we might have a whole room of stuff. It really isn't worth that much. And, and plus, that much. we would have to show its receipts for all that stuff. And a lot of stuff we're getting from yard sales and, you know, thrift right. stores. Stuff so, we don't even claim on taxes because it's so low. So we couldn't even prove how much we have. So it's yeah. not – it's worth it to us. Now, if we were wholesalers or we right. sold – yeah. Uh, fancy goods where we could actually show you have all your invoices I bought you know a thousand Gucci handbags for a million dollars you know <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to resell those right if you can insure that and Gucci will not let you do that um yeah so okay next question uh have we ever thought about selling our second store on eBay like someone had called about selling her eBay account so when he asked that I actually just went on eBay and typed in eBay account and uh, nothing pops up okay, so sure. I mean I would love to see if someone has a link to where someone can buy someone else's eBay this account store. on eBay I don't <laughs> it's so meta I did type in PayPal account and there's like someone in Bangladesh where I can buy a 100% verified PayPal account for $4.99. Uh, what? That seems so scammy. Why would someone buy a PayPal account? Yeah, I mean, I just, I kind of feel like that's, you know, like a lot of stuff on eBay, you know, there's a lot of things that are kind of illegal on eBay. And, or not allowed, and but it's it'll eventually get taken. Home. Yeah, this person has a zero fee. Yeah. So well, I just, so. I, I have heard of sellers selling an eBay business. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just one of those things where, like, I guess there's an amount of trust. Right. And the thing is, is, like, if you give me the – it's money, and then I'll give you the password, and basically it's yours. Right. And everyone just has to feel listed. good. Here's like, all my inventory. Yeah, or even right. just the eBay name. I mean, the, the seller oh, like name. The... I, I think that's what people are talking about. I want to buy an eBay store. That has all the... Already has good oh, see, its reputation. I thought when this person was called us, they were talking about, like, like then they give all the inventory. Like, if I bought my mom's store, uh, if she's like, I'm done... Well, that's different. I mean, then you know, it's like, we're not buying her actual eBay account. We're buying her inventory. We're just going to go pull up a truck and, like, load up her stuff and put it in our eBay account. But how, I think, would, how would you do both? Say, say... Well, I just told you. I mean, there would have to be a mechanism where I trust you and if you trust me Here's that the, the password, password I give you is the password yeah, and yeah. the money that you give me, uh, you're not going to like take back. Or right, whatever. exactly. I personally think that, I mean, eBay would frown on that and they wouldn't like yes, it if they found out. they would out. not like that. But again, it would have to be a trustworthy thing. You know? Right. That's all. So the other question you were saying where you tried out promoted listings, but on 30 day listings, when they ended, they were no longer promoted. So you switched it to good till canceled. Yeah. I mean, we just always have done good till canceled. You know, we do list it and forget it. So it's all good till canceled for everything. Like I don't touch my listings. Yeah, ever. I mean, you know, we That's get how I do we it. get into the periods where we're like, we've had this thing for so long, let's change the price. Sure, or, sure. You know, but, but for the most part, we don't have like a system. Like some people have a system. We we call it the list it and attend it. That's the new where phrase. they're like, okay, I have this spreadsheet. Okay, it's been thirty days. Let's mark everything at fifty percent. Or you know, now it's at ninety days. Now I need to put everything on. 90 instant auctions, you know, like <laughs> you've talked about that. It's like a system, and that's cool. Uh, we just yeah. don't attend it, yeah. 
I hope that answers all your questions. Yeah, and uh, congrats for oh yeah, going I should I should have awesome. said that first. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. it. I, all the questions like made me forget. Yeah, have you know, and just it's make sure have fun. Like you didn't yeah. quit your job to sell online to like make a sweatshop for yourself. Do a grind. Like make yes. sure if you're buying and selling stuff, have a lot of fun. Experiment. You know. Right. Right. Exactly. Like, uh, don't get stuck on like I'm only selling. You know, Echo shoes. Be like, just sell <laughs> I whatever. Love how that's what you chose. You know? um, yeah. <laughs> No, that's very exciting. We love hearing when people say, I quit my job to go yeah. full time. Like, and then yes. use the money that you make on eBay to do something else fun. Like yes. start a food truck. You are obsessed. <laughs> what kind of food truck? Tacos. Yes. Yeah. Fish tacos. Oh, yeah. Hello, Jay and Ryan. This is Linda Shields. And lately, every time I'm listing a new item, it asks me whether it is a bundle listing. And I'm never sure exactly what that means. Do you have any idea what they mean by bundle listing? Thanks. I've noticed that too in item specifics. Hi, Linda. It's nice to hear from you. I noticed that that's new. They're like, is this a bundled listing? I mean, I just leave it blank because you're right. I'm like, I, what do they mean by that? What's a bundled listing? Does it mean like it comes with other stuff? But if it comes with other stuff, aren't you, like, already saying that, you know, it comes with a power cord. I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. So I'm sure somebody knows, um, and hopefully they will come on the forum and tell us what that means. Because, yes, I've noticed that, too. Hey, Ryan and Jay. This is Brian from Chicago giving you a shout-out here. Um, I'm just calling in about um, the infamous Vero in, on fractions you can get on eBay. Um so I don't – this is my first one, and I was just wondering if you had any uh, experience in this. Um, and this one I find curious. Um, I had sold a used T-shirt that said um, Sons of Lombardi Green Bay. And this shirt um, had like a, a ripoff of the uh, Sons of Anarchy uh, Grim Reaper guy. So it kind of looked like that, um, if you're familiar with the uh, Sons of Anarchy. It had the Reaper guy with kind of like the motorcycle club. Uh, labels or tags above it and below it. Um, so they obviously had copied this. Um, and when I, it had been up for about, I don't know, 24 hours and I got the little notice from eBay saying uh, they had taken this down because the owner said um, I was infringing upon their copyrighted um, or copyright, I don't know, whatever it is. But anyways, just wondering um, what your experience was on that, uh, especially selling used items. I'm not selling something new. Um, I'm not claiming to. Um, just wondering, maybe if like just simple something as simple as the title. Um, if that's how you get around, maybe you can't use their specific name. I guess is what they would be mad about. But also, I don't know if it is irony. Maybe it is. Um, they copied, and then they're accusing me of copying. So, anyways, as always, thanks for everything, and talk to you soon. Bye now. Yeah, I mean we're definitely not experts on this, but from what I understand. Anyone can came, claim copyright on anything. Right. Like what eBay is doing is they're just setting up a system so that they can take the heat off themselves. Right. So anyone can go on, claim a Vero claim, and then they take that item off. And then the person that had elicited it has to actually fight it and prove it. And so right. it's all a pain in the butt. Right. And so how can you avoid it? The only thing I can tell is just there are some brands right. that are more aggressive about it than others. Yeah. And you just have to learn what those brands are and sometimes it's because it you actually get it's one of those claims. Like yeah. we've heard and we've seen that uh it's monster energy drink. Monster, yeah. They're super aggressive about it. Trying like to put no up a, hat. Like try and put up a hat no shirt that's for real, like an authentic monster yeah. hat. Like you got it at one of their events. They'll claim it's counterfeit. Yep. You know? And then you would have to actually prove it. And then it's like... What's the point? What's the point? Yeah. And so I guess their their tactics works because right. their stuff probably isn't online as much. So anyway... So, so, so what was interesting though is that you said, how do you get around it? Do you not use you know, the name of the company? But then you're like... Why would anyone buy your shirt if they can't search for it under the name of the company, you know, of your... So it gets kind of like, yeah, how does that work? It's just kind of going to the path of least... It's re, 
assistance, you know, like if you're into fighting people and dealing with our lawyers, that's cool. But for us, it's like, if something seems complicated, we're like, we'll just throw it back in the stream and just start selling something Yeah, else. exactly. It's just not worth the time. But yeah, it is a pain. Okay, that's it for the podcast today. That was a lot of good calls. You can check out the blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discussed and to join the conversation on the forum. Again, you can leave a question or a comment on our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. We post an episode every Monday morning. On Wednesday, we post a What Sells video, currently brought to you by Stephen Schultz. And Steve is so consistent. I really love it. He's just, we kind of like asked him one week and he just does it every week and it's really good, you know? I mean, if if you're interested in in seeing what people buy and sell, he does a really good job explaining why he thinks an item sold and how much he sold it for. And where he got it. And shipping. Yeah. It's It's great. Yes. Thank you, Steve. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube so you always get the latest episode. You can rent our vacation house. We have a new one. We linked to it in the last podcast. It's very pretty. Yep. Come and and stay. Come stay with us. It's a lot of work. A lot of old shoes had to get sold to fix that place (laughs) up, I'm telling you. Yes. One day I'll tell you exactly how much we (laughs) I don't know. One day. Yes. Uh, We are ending this podcast in three, two, one. Goodbye.